Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 71762, Kai's Fire Dragon Evo from the LEGO Ninjago theme. This set contains 204 pieces, 3 minifigures, and retails for $29.99 in the US. So Kai's Fire Dragon Evo is of course one of the Ninjago Evo sets, meaning it has like an upgradable evolution aspect to it where each individual bag in the set adds onto the set. But like this build you see in front of you right here, this is just built from the first bag of the set and is still complete in a sense. But as you open more of the bags, it adds more detail to the set and makes it more complete. It's a really interesting concept. I've already reviewed some of the other Evo sets, and on some of them it's pretty good, and others not so much. But now let's take a look at this guy. So this is the quote-unquote base form of the Fire Dragon, and... Hmm. <laughs> what to say about this guy? Right off the bat, he is tall. This is a very, very tall dragon. I don't know why they chose to do the ball joints like this to connect the feet to the legs. They used this really large piece with the ball at the end to connect the socket to. And it makes the foot so far from the leg, it doesn't really work that well for like an organic dragon. Another thing is, these joints obviously have holes in them. That's not a huge deal in like a mech, but on a dragon, why does he have holes in his body? That doesn't necessarily make the most sense. It looks a little better once you upgrade him, but definitely in this base form, that looks weird. If you lean him forward like this a little bit, his long legs aren't as noticeable. However, it still has an issue where I feel like the feet are too far away from the legs. Real quick, just taking a look at like the Thunder Dragon Evo from the same wave, like the way they connected the feet here is so much better, so not sure why they decided to go with this for this guy. Moving away from the feet though, let's take a look at the head. The head uses this new like molded dragon head building system that was originally introduced with the Jungle Dragon and the Overlord Dragon, and it's been used in quite a few sets at this point. They have different sets of head and jaw pieces, and they get turned upside down so jaws can become heads and heads can become jaws. So this is the same head piece that was used on the Jungle Dragon and on the Water Dragon. It's also used as the bottom jaw of Lloyd's Legendary Dragon from this wave. But this bottom jaw piece is actually all new for this set, and I don't believe it's been used anywhere else yet. I don't know how well it fits like a fire dragon, but I do have to say I really really like the mold. The design of this jaw turned upside down would make a really good top headpiece, I could see this being used for like an earth dragon in the future. Like covering up the fire dragon's eyes, imagine that as the dragon's head, that would look pretty cool. But as the beard, it looks alright, it's pretty unique. Definitely not one of my favorite jaw pieces though. The upper and lower parts of the jaw are connected the same way they are in the thunder dragon, and I'm not a fan of that, it just feels very clunky. I just feel like there's a better way to do it. They did it with like battle droid arms on the jungle dragon. I think that worked well. But these pieces just seem so big, they really get in the way. But of course, thanks to that, you can hinge the jaw open if you want. So that way you can have him like screaming. There's a look at how the mouth mechanism works on the inside. And you can see the head is on a hinge so you can move it down or move it up. Legs I talked about a little bit with like the weird gappy hole. But the rest of it doesn't look good. It gets much, much better once you upgrade it and do the whole Evo aspect. But in this form, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan. He's got a few spikes on his back, these technicals right here. And at the very back, you have his tail, which does not have very much at all going on. Just a ton of studs right here, and then it ends on a ball socket. Yeah, this form of the dragon, not great. Gonna be completely honest, not the best. But let's move to the next stage of the Evo and see if it looks any better. So to do that, you have to pull apart the front and back parts of the body. Insert this section into the middle, then reattach the front. Add this one little piece to the end of the tail, and attach his wing pieces into these technicals. Okay, and now he's looking a little bit more complete. I still think the long legs look odd, especially with like the ball joint at the very end, but the wings really add a lot to this build. They look really good. They're an all new piece for this wave, they're dual molded in red and like trans orange. These are the same wings used on Jay's Thunder Dragon, though obviously in different colors. And they're really cool parts, I like them a lot. The longer body also definitely helps this guy. Unlike with the Thunder Dragon where I didn't really like the body extension, this one definitely improves him. He felt too smushed together before, and while the design of this is very simple, it fits well. It's a nice transition from the front to the back. I think it's a very nice, very welcome addition. The tail additioner on the back is nothing, like what, what do I have to add from that? And that's everything. It wasn't much with the stage of evolution, but it vastly improves this build. Still far from perfect, but I think it actually looks decently solid like this. And I like how the wings can be moved up and down as well. But now let me move to the final Evo stage. So this is the stage where the dragon gets all this different golden armor. So there's lots of different pieces you have to attach to the legs. On the hind legs you have to put golden straw hats which are really cute. And both legs have these gold bars that you put at the bottom. One of these armor pieces does connect to the studs on the tail. You do all the same stuff on the other side of course. You attach these large gold blades into these technicals on the back. Fire at the end of the tail. Saddle on the dragon's back. And teamwork banner attached to the saddle. You also now upgrade the wings to make them even bigger. 
And here you go, there is the fully upgraded version of the Fire Dragon Evo. The final upgrade definitely fixes a lot of my issues with it, however it creates a few new ones. The golden armor makes the actual legs look a lot better. It covers up the hole in the front legs, and there's still one in the back legs, but it's not nearly as obvious. So the legs as a whole do look solid now, and I can believe this is part of a dragon. However, the ball joint at the very end is still weird. I don't know why they decided to use that joint instead of the one they used on the Thunder Dragon. The tail is vastly better now too, the golden armor at this part makes it look a lot better as well as the fire at the very end. It actually feels complete now and you can actually like wave this and everything. This upgrade looks really good. The golden blades weren't necessary but provide some nice extra detail. And the saddle of course is cool because now you can actually sit Kai on the dragon. Speaking of, there's how Kai looks actually doing that. The teamwork banner is also a really cool part, it's printed just like the other ones. I don't believe this one came in any other sets. But you can see it's got a picture of a ninja with a dragon behind it, and it's printed just like all the other ones. And I feel like that's just an excellent part. Very, very happy to get that one. And those were some solid improvements overall, but now let me show you where I think the dragon's lacking a little bit, and that is, of course, the wings. You may have noticed the wings are blocking this guy's face in a lot of these angles. And that's because I don't know what to do with the wings. There's no good way to lay them. So the added golden armor on the legs, while it now makes the legs look really good, prevents the wings from going down too far. So in just like a neutral standing position, the wings are just sort of circling this guy's head. I don't like how they come forward further than his head too, that just feels weird to me. They should be on his back, not out in front of his head. It just doesn't look right or feel right at all. And as I said, the armor on the legs now restricts any movement downwards, so the only movement you can do is move these up. And that doesn't really create a believable flying motion if he has to stop halfway right here. I wish there was a way to fold these down, I wish these were further back, and I'm sure those are fairly easy customizations you can make, but the fact is, that's not how they are out of the box. So personally, I'm not a big fan of the expanded wings, they just seem too big to me. Not in a good spot, they don't have a good range of motion, and they just don't look good. You have little claws at the very end, which are fine, I guess, I don't know, they look a little weird to me. But yeah, the wings on the fully upgraded version are by far the worst part of this guy. Like, even if you put his feet back to fly, he looks okay, but... This guy just doesn't work as well to me as the Thunder Dragon does in terms of posability. In terms of objective looks, this guy's definitely a better looking dragon. In most senses, again, the wings are much better than the other one. But yeah, all of this just seems awkward to me. I'm not the biggest fan of it. But I think that's all I have to say on the main build of the Fire Dragon, so now let's take a look at the side builds and then the minifigures. So the first side build in the set is this little drone for one of the snakes control. This is very funny. Very simple little build, but it's cute and it's effective. I like the transclear disc pieces, those are always very useful to get. They use frying pans to hold them up too, which are fun parts, and they use the new stud shooter introduced with the Batman wave from 2021. You just push down the top of course, and a stud will shoot out. In this case, it's trans green actual studs, not tiles. Most of the other sets have used tiles for these, but this one does actually use studs. Not too much else to say on this, but it's cute, I like it. And this could technically be part of the minifigure section, but because the backpack's so big, I might as well look at it here. But the other side build in the set is this little jetpack for the Geo Whipper, and there's not too much to it, he's got these giant teal wings, two fans at the back, and I guess some exhausts down here to propel him up. And I think that's a good build, it allows him to actually fly in the air and fight the fire dragon, I suppose. I always love getting villain vehicles in sets, and a back attachment's a fun idea. It's also cool to see Geo Whipper with a back attachment, because in pretty much every other set, it's Mango Whipper with a back attachment, so it's nice to see a little bit of variety there. But yeah, the jetpack's a cute build, and I feel like it'd be a lot of fun to play with. I'm a fan. So here's the first figure included in this set. We of course have Korkai. Korkai is probably my second or third favorite core suit. I absolutely love the bright orange on him. I think that's such a cool color. He's used it a little bit in the past in his printing, but he's never used it on actual pieces before. It looks fantastic on his mask, and I like how it's on his one arm too. It also carries over into his torso printing with this like fiery design, which I think looks amazing. The dark orange for the legs is a really, really cool color. And you can see right there, he has the letter K written in the Ninjago language, obviously, for Kai. Even like the dark red of the ropes around his legs, I think this guy just looks really, really cool overall. One of the more simple ninja suit designs of this wave, but it's very good. I don't really have any complaints with it. In terms of accessories, he also comes with a chicken leg or a turkey leg to feed to the dragon. That's fun to get, I like getting an accessory that isn't just a weapon for the ninja. But speaking of weapons, he does come with a katana in this set. All of the ninja this wave come with katanas that match one of their colors. So Kai here comes with a red katana. It would have been cool if it was bright orange, because the rest of the ninja's katanas match the secondary color of their suits while Kai's matches the main color. And we've gotten red katanas in the past, we've never gotten a bright orange katana. However, the red still works well enough and it fits him pretty well. And I do still like getting a specialized katana for Kai. There's how he looks with the armor and hood removed. And there's the back torso print as well as the alternate face. You can see that like fiery design continues around the back and swirls around the symbol in the middle. That's probably my favorite back torso print of this wave, I think that looks amazing. And that symbol in the middle says the word ninja written in the Ninjago language. All of the ninja suits this wave have this on the back, and it's a nice bit of consistency and I think it looks good. And then here are the other two figures in the set, we have Geo Whipper and Mango Whipper, also known as a Bowa Destructor and a Cobra Mechanic. Geo Whipper obviously came with that jetpack attachment that I haven't removed now just so you can see him up a little bit closer, and Mango Whipper comes with this little remote control build which I guess you can imagine he uses to control the drone that's in this set. 
The two Whippers are very similar figures though that I've talked about in many of my other reviews, but in short, I love both of them. Geo Whipper is definitely my preferred one, however, he does not come with this full like armor set in this set, so I don't like him as much in this form, but he still looks really, really good. I love how like the orange looks beneath the gunmetal gray. He genuinely looks kind of cool like this, which is surprising because the Whipper head's inherently really funny, and that's why I love the Whipper heads because they look funny, especially like on Mango Whipper. But no, this color combination genuinely makes Geo Whipper look kind of cool, and I think that's really impressive. And the inverse of that still looks really good, not as cool, more funny, but I love that as well. In terms of torso prints, obviously the colors are inverted. They both have like a sort of coppery aesthetic going on with the teal on top of the orange. Geo Whipper though looks more armored than Mango Whipper does, and they both have the same leg print. There's also a look at both of their back torso prints. They both have like the scale design, and the Mango Whipper has like these back straps where I guess you could attach something, because in many of the other sets he does have some sort of back attachment, so you can imagine those connecting to those straps on his back. Yeah, not much else to say on these guys. Again, I've covered them, I think, in nine different reviews now, so it's been a lot. But despite covering them so many times, I still absolutely adore them. They are both fantastic. So, what are my overall thoughts on this set? I... How do I articulate my feelings on this set? Right off the bat, it's not worth the price. This is not a $30 set. Thinking about, like, the Overlord Dragon that came out last year for the same exact price. Yeah, if you don't have the Overlord Dragon yet and you can find it... Get that instead of this, don't get this. But I do like this overall, despite its many, many flaws. The Evo Dragon system is inherently fun, even if, like, only one stage tends to look good. And it does allow for easy customizability. Like, one of my biggest issues at the very end were the big wings didn't look good. But because of the Evo system, it's very easy to take apart. So you can take off that, like, second set of wings and just have the first set. And I think that would vastly improve how this build looks. It does still have a lot of issues though, I don't like the ball joints at the feet, again very easy customization to make, just change it to how the Thunder Dragon does it, it's a very simple change but would vastly improve this build, because the feet being so separated from everything else is just weird. This guy is also very tall, like unnaturally tall, it feels strange, but I think that gives him a unique identity so I think I am a fan of that part at least. And the new headpiece of course is cool, I love the new jaw piece, and with all the golden armor on, the body as a whole does look really good. So would I recommend it? No, probably not. As a cheap way to get Kai, it's fine, because, well, the next cheapest way to get him is $90. So if you're a big Kai fan and you're not, not buying the $90 or $100 set, it's fine to get him in this set. I think that's solid enough. But if you're just looking for good Ninjago sets to get, get a different one. If you want one of the Evo Dragons, the Lightning Dragon's probably a better bet. Or if you want a good $30 Dragon, get literally any other one, because any of them are a better value than this one. Bit disappointed with the price of this one, honestly, because Ninjago's usually pretty good with their prices. But yeah, this should have been $25 max probably 20. Definitely more in depth than the Lightning Dragon, but not $10 more in depth. Figures are solid though, 3 and a $30 set's pretty nice. And just like with the Lightning Dragon, I feel like there's a lot of room for customization options with this guy. I feel like you could make a really, really cool looking Fire Dragon using the parts from this set as well as your own parts. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please press like, subscribe if you're new. I do Lego and Ninjago videos like this almost every day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.